What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a Capital Hungry educational webinar about the age of instant gratification. <clears throat> so this is just another presentation, more based on psychology, both relatable to your day-to-day -day life. And obviously, we're going to translate a lot of this um, ideology around the current age of instant gratification and how it impacts the majority of retail traders in the modern age. Okay, so age of instant gratification, capital hungry market research. <clears throat> so the agenda for today, what we are going to be going through, trying to keep it pretty short and sweet, just because um, I got a, I got some complaints. I don't even know if it's a complaint about my webinars being too long, like 30, 40 minutes, one hour. They're too long, but I don't know how else to. I don't know how else to give out the information. <laughs> but anyways, the agenda we will be going through today is first understanding what is instant gratification? What does the modern society promote? The negative effects of instant gratification, the translation of instant gratification into trading, the aspect of reprogramming and solutions to obviously um, improve our mentality and psychology, whether it be in our decisions with our day-to-day -day life, and of course, more importantly, with our trading. But the reason, if, every, if anybody has noticed, the reason why I've been focusing more on psychology in our day-to-day -day life, because I have a very strong ideology about how you do one thing is how you do everything. You know what I mean? I don't know if you guys have heard that saying before, but how you do one thing is pretty much how you're going to approach and do everything. So how you program your mind, how you approach various situations in your day-to-day -day life and psychologically break down your decision-making process is going to translate into other parts of your life, whether it's in relationships, business, trading, learning other, any other skill sets and so forth. Okay. So this is going to be the agenda we will be running through. I tried to make some very relatable <clears throat> animations and artistry here, a little bit of abstract art, just about growing your own mind, lighting up your own brain there, growing it, feeding it, nurturing it. You know what I mean? Abstract art. <laughs> I'm going to see a lot of that throughout this webinar. Anyways, what is instant gratification? The experience of satisfaction or receipt of reward as soon as a response is made, meaning as soon as you are looking to, to execute on a potential task or event, your brain is looking for an instantaneous response of satisfaction or a reward. The desire to experience pleasure or fulfillment without delay, okay? Instant gratification is based on the pleasure model of psychology. If you ever want to go dive deeper and research that, just Google uh, psychology pleasure model concept. But basically, to summarize, the pleasure model psychological concept works pretty much hand in hand with modern instant gratification. So to summarize what the pleasure model is, <clears throat> this states that the majority of humans will be inclined to make decisions and act upon pleasure when, when, they're when they are regarding their needs, wants, and urges. So upon pleasure, needs, wants, and urges. The consumeristic society markets and preys off of this pleasure psychology model in instant gratification. So basically, if you were to look at your day-to-day -day life, any event or task that is very mo more than likely low effort low energy does not require a lot of your brain bot battery to process, but can give you a quick jolt of like a dopamine hit can give you that quick little happiness, like watching a TikTok that may make you laugh, playing a video game for an extended period of time, watching something on Netflix that really these events are low effort, don't use much energy. They don't really bring much production to your brain but they do provide that instant gratification. And when you're looking at our modern societies in your day-to-day -day life, when you really start to become more in tune with what's going on in your reality, how you're spending every minute of your day, not every hour of your day, how you're spending every minute of your day, you're going to realize 
how much time and effort is going into this instant gratification pleasure model, okay? This was also explained in a bit more detail in one of the last psychology webinars um, where, do you guys remember when we were talking about the statistics of how many times the person on average would check their phone for notifications subconsciously without knowing, or the amount of times they check their email in an hour, or the amount of times they pull their phone out of their pocket subconsciously, right? A lot of these events are subconscious until you give conscious thought to it and start saying, wait, what am I doing? Why am I checking my phone a hundred times? Like nothing's changing here, but it's so crazy how the programming is pushed in our society. And we're going to talk about that a bit more, but pretty much instant gratification is a human being's desire to experience pleasure or fulfillment without delay. The key, the key focus is the pleasure because psychologically humans majority of the time in our comments, in our modern society, as we're so far away from survival, a lot of their decisions will be based on pleasure. <clears throat> so the societal marketing plan, right? We have to understand that marketing in essence is really just manipulation. Marketing is one party, the seller, manipulating the customer into buying the product or service, good, whatever it may be, right? So when you're looking at these various huge corporations, you have to understand that the figures are there. It's very clear that they spend a copious amount of money on their advertising and marketing. And you have to ask yourself why. It's not like people are naturally inclined every day to go buy cheeseburgers or to look at every single sale on clothes items or to constantly check every single social media platform or be addicted to likes. These aren't natural human processes. These are various events that have to be, uh, that have to be introduced to the brain and conditioned day in and day out that you should be doing this. You should be eating this. You should be focused on this. You should be buying this right? So we have to understand that within our society, there is this very, very universal marketing plan. And we're going to be breaking that down in further detail as well. But corporations spend billions of dollars a year on marketing and advertising to keep humans consuming as much as possible. Because at the end of the day, when we're looking at the psychology factor of human greed, we understand that human greed can never be quenched. It can never be filled. As you get power, you want more power. As you get money, you want more money. It's just a very, very common reoccurring psychological concept we've seen in humans since the dawn of time, right? So when the primary, <clears throat> when the primary goal of marketing is to manipulate customers into buying your product or service, and when the primary goal of the individuals who are doing this marketing, who are selling these products, who are the heads of these corporations, when, the, when their primary goal is profit, not the well-being of the customer, not what the customer really wants or needs that's going to be best suited for their life. No, number one goal is profit. The easiest way to target this in your customer base is by attacking the pleasure model psychologically because human beings are already naturally inclined to follow decisions that will fulfill their pleasure filled needs urges and wants okay so the easiest way to do this in a survival distance society meaning the majority of the um, nations that we live in are extremely far away from survival you're not going out there hunting your daily food or, sc or scavenging for food to eat or a shelter to stay in or focus on your survival day in and day out. All of that is quite automatic in our developed societies. So that's something you have to understand because the human brain's pleasure model that I'm talking about from a psychological perspective, this comes after survival, right? Remember what I talked about in the human brain webinar as well. The brain has very, very basic functions taking you from one day to the next when the brain is actually in the brain and body the individual himself is actually in survival mode that's what the brain is focusing on 
the decisions that the brain will make primarily will be dictated based on survival, just trying to get something to eat. Doesn't matter what it is, where in a, in a survival distance society, the number one focus is the pleasure model because that survival aspect is being taken out of the equation, right? So the easiest way to do this in a survival distance society not in a society that's focused on survival or a third world nation and so forth, but a well-developed nation that's far away from survival is by catering to the pleasure model of instant satisfaction. What is advertised, regardless if it's what you eat, what you consume mentally or physically, various services, events, everything of um, modern marketing and advertisements is always based on ease of access, quick, convenient, a dopamine hit, and pleasure-based, right? Every single type of marketing tactic out there, whether you're going to go look in the fitness industry, and I really encourage people to open their eyes and look at these various industries through this lens, because you're going to see the common pattern. The marketing tactic is universal in the society and the same across all industries. If you can find a way to exploit someone's pleasure, whether it be with social media or with a food item or with a various service or event, or if you can find a way to make someone's life even easier or more accessible to a certain product or event, there's a very high probability it will be successful. <clears throat> okay, now, what's extremely interesting about the pleasure model and the various products, services, and what's advertised in society is that the feeling of pleasure attained from these various events is always short-lived. And it's short-lived for a reason. Because if these corporations, if the one percenters, if they were selling a pill that's supposed to, that you take and pay one time, and it's supposed to make you happy for a year, well, they wouldn't be making much money in business, would they? Right? The instant gratification is meant and designed to be short-lived, right? When you think about it that way, it makes, it makes a lot of sense because when the instant gratification is fast, when the dopamine hit received, when the pleasure model activated is very short-lived, then that person is always going to be looking to chase more, fulfill that urge again as aggressively and as quickly as possible. This essentially is the starting point of an addiction, right? But this whole marketing tactic is what generates so much money, is what generates so much profit. So the societal marketing plan, we have to understand corporations spend billions of dollars a year on marketing and advertising to keep humans consuming as much as possible for a reason, for the amount of money it makes. The easiest way to do this in a survival distant society is by catering to the pleasure model of instant satisfaction. What is advertised is always quick, convenient, easy, a dopamine hit, and majority of the times pleasure-based. Majority of the time, the pleasure felt by the service or product consumption is short-lived, meaning more consumption is needed for more pleasure. Also to add on to this, do you think the degree or intensity of the pleasure is the same? You think the first time you eat a Big Mac and how you felt eating that Big Mac, do you think it's the same the fifth time? No, you have what is called almost like the law of diminishing returns or how you start to get very adjusted to these pleasurable activities. So you always have somebody looking for more they're either going to increase their quantity of consumption to try to equal that same level of a dopamine hit and that same intensity of pleasure, or they're going to try to escalate into something that provides a higher intensity of pleasure and satisfaction. It's absolutely insane that when you look at the marketing of these corporations across industries, how it targets instant gratification, how it targets that pleasure model, where it's literally creating crackheads. There's no difference from somebody being addicted to dopamine hits from an instant gratification method, whether that be through consuming junk food, 
whether that be through consuming social media and being addicted to validation, constantly trying to shop and buy new materialistic goods to fuel your short-term pleasure. There's no difference between that and being addicted to crack. It's just that one is normalized in society and one is not normalized in society, right? But there's absolutely no difference. The best modern marketing plan being as cold and as blunt as possible, regardless of whatever industry you are in, is creating pleasure addicts, right? If you can create pleasure addicts, you're going to have an endless customer base, a customer base who's going to be constantly looking for more dopamine, more pleasure, constantly, be, constantly going to be consuming, never spending any time in production, which is the perfect customer. A customer who only consumes, who only follows the marketing, who is addicted to the products is a perfect customer from a capitalistic standpoint. Right? So now, even though that marketing plan and those tactics can generate billions of dollars in profit, right, are causing corporations to be more profitable than ever before seen, the effects on the human being on the other end of the marketing scheme, on the other end of the manipulation, on the other end of the mental programming is absolutely destructive destructive across all levels because at the end of the day this consumption requires some type of cost some type of sacrifice sometimes it can be a monetary sacrifice where you're paying for drugs you're paying for fast food you're paying for these goods and services every day that are only providing instant gratification sometimes the cost and sacrifice can be your health sometimes the cost and sacrifice can be your attention your time your effort Okay, so the negative effects of this modern marketing, of this age of instant gratification, it is well documented and well proven. It is statistically proven that humans who only focus on short term pleasure in the modern society will decline their life. Only consuming based on pleasure, whether it's physically, financially, or mentally, will only cause self destruction. And we have some various charting here just to give some visual examples. And what I want you to really look at is the dates on some of these examples, right? Really look at past the year 2000 into the year 2010s, 1990s to 2000s. The age of the internet, the age of technology advancements, the age of more connectivity, where people were starting to do various things online, online shopping started to emerge, online marketing, online sales, and so forth, right? This depression chart is from 2009, but I just wanted to show that as well. So first chart here, household debt in the trillions of dollars with a historical concept, a uh, context for the US, <clears throat> okay? Um, this is sourced from the New York Fed Consumer Panel, Fed Reserve Board, okay? You can see that obviously you have to factor inflation and so forth, but regardless of inflation, you have an exponential increase in household debt from the year 2000 onward, right? This means that individuals, individuals, when you're looking at the masses, are consuming at a higher rate than the income they are bringing in. This is validation that those marketing tactics by the corporations to target instant gratification, to target that pleasure model of the human brain is working because, because individuals are so engulfed in consumption that they're willing to go into debt for this consumption. They're willing to compile credit card debt to buy the newest items, to make sure they can eat this fast food every week. They're willing to go into this debt so they can continue to feed their addiction. You know who else I know will go into debt to feed addiction? Crackheads, people who are addicted to cocaine, people who are addicted to meth. They will also do that same thing. But remember, one is normalized in society and one is not. 
but the mental impacts are no different. The marketing plan of a cartel drug dealer to get their, to get their customer addicted to their drug that gives them a short-term high so they keep coming back for more is no different from the marketing plan of a corporation, is it? That's the insane thing. This is why we have to wake up out of this matrix because it's so easy to fall victim into this addictive marketing plan that is no different than Pablo Escobar's cartel. You know what I mean? It's no different. It's a businessman selling an addictive product that provides short-term pleasure where the customer will keep coming back for more, right? Obesity in U.S. adults. Um, this is percentage of U.S. adults out of the entire population that is obese. We're almost nearing 40%. I think we're actually sitting at around high 30% right now, nearing 40%. In another decade, almost half of all you almost half of all americans will be obese why how could somebody let themselves go to that extent how could somebody overlook their well-being their health their vitality the only people who i know who would neglect their health in chase of pleasure are drug addicts These are, consu these are consumption addicts. It's no different. Okay? Now, another piece of very interesting information. Depression rates. What I want you to look at is two pieces of information here. One, the stagnant depression rates over about an eight-year period. Let me use a different color so you can see it better. The stagnant inflation rates from about ages 30 to 50. But the inflation, depression rates, <laughs> I'm so used to talking about economics, <laughs> the stagnant, the stagnant depression rates in ages around 30 to 50, right? Over the course of the last decade, relatively stagnant, but you're seeing an exponential increase in depression rates, primarily from 16 to 25. Why is that? It seems pretty obvious now, doesn't it? Who do you think spending more time on social media, on the online world, on their phone, on these various apps? You think it's the 30 to 50 year olds who are, who are just learning and introduced to this technology, who are first just learned to use their phone to make phone calls, who only know how to access the internet through their computer to do very basic things? Or do you think it's the younger generations who are born into this age? Right? There's a reason why there's an exponential increase in depression amongst individuals from around the age of 15 to 25 there. It's because they are the ones who are the most exposed to the social media world, to the online marketing, to the internet overall. Okay? So that tells you, it's not just the reason why this is important. It's not just that overall depression is increasing across the board. No, the 30 to 50 year olds there, they've been managing their depression rates fairly well. I wonder why. The majority of 50 year olds and 50 plus have far less screen time, way less social media. The majority of 50-year-olds, when they want to buy something online, your grandpa, your mom, they're going to ask you, hey, can you please order this for me? <laughs> We've all been there, right? So you're seeing the impact of the screen time, the social media time, the online world, the marketing. You're seeing the impact where it's proven that if you spend more time online, the more time you spend on social media, the more time you spend exposed to all of that marketing, the more inclined you are into consuming. Consuming is just short-term pleasure, long-term depression, long-term obesity, long-term debt. Absolutely insane. Okay? So 
yes, from a capitalistic standpoint, that marketing tactic of creating pleasure addicts, which is no different than what a drug dealer does to his customers, right? That marketing tactic is extremely effective, extremely profitable from a capitalistic perspective, from an economic perspective, of course, but from a humane perspective, who's paying the price? And, and the price really is human life. Essentially, when a person is going down this path and they're in financial debt, they're in terrible physical shape, they're depressed, this is a slow death sentence, is it not? This might as well be a 50-year death sentence, a 30-year death sentence. What's the difference? You're prepping yourself up for, to die, right? Also, these corporate motherfuckers, these one percenters, they're, they're devious. They are straight evil to the core to get that profit. When a person is very fat and hating themselves, when a person is in debt and stressed out about bills, when a person is feeling depressed, what do you think they're going to be more inclined to do to numb out that depression that they're feeling that they're not, they're not sure why they're feeling this depression. They're not sure why they're getting so fat. They're not sure why they're so behind on their bills. But what they are sure of is that being behind on their bills, being in credit card debt brings stress, brings more tension. Being unhealthy, being overweight brings stress, brings more tension. Being depressed, being in a negative mind state brings stress. It brings more tension. When a person who's subjected to the modern society of instant gratification is feeling more stress and tension, what do you think they're going to be inclined to do? You think they're going to have a wake-up call to change their life and start working out out of the blue? Or do you think they're going to dive deeper into consumption? The answer is very clear, right? So you have this vicious cycle that is, that is almost like a self-running engine feeding into itself that's constantly making the rich even richer at the cost of the 99% at the cost of their lives, okay? Obesity, obesity is the quintessential disease of modernity, the modern society, right? Throughout human history and indeed in life itself, before here, the struggle has been to procure, store and conserve energy. This is very like, complex lingo if you don't read often but this is basically saying before the ages of modern society the main focus and struggle of humans was day-to-day -day survival can you get your food to store your energy can you conserve and preserve that energy you had constraints on your food intake right these constraints on your food intake were environmentally imposed financially imposed physically imposed right there was restrictions on how much you could eat. There was limitations on how much energy you could conserve. You had to be very smart because number one goal of your brain was what? Survival. When the goal of the brain is survival, at that state, the, the pleasure model doesn't exist yet, right? First, it has to survive. It's focused on what exactly it says here. Procure energy, store energy, conserve energy, right? But when all of that gets completely scrapped out, there's no more struggle to procure, store, or conserve energy. There's no more constraints on food intake due to environmental or, geo or geographical reasons. Now you can get various food products year-round, even if it's not in harvest because of import and export. Now you can get food delivered to your doorstep at a snap of a finger without even having to cook, without having to do anything. As a result of that, individuals in modern societies, modern societies continually store excess energy as their bodies prepare, prepare for a famine that never arrives. What this is basically summarizing is the, the masses of people in the modern society they're basically acting like bears, storing up food for like hibernation where they're not actually hibernating. 
They're not actually, when bears store up food and hibernate, it's for the cold winter where they will not be able to eat. They're going to be hibernating. They're conserving and storing all of their energy for that winter period. It's a survival tactic. But now you have the modern individual in society storing all this excess energy, which is carbohydrates, fat, into their body for no reason, right? When you are storing excess energy, carbohydrates, fat, whatever you want to call it, and your body is not actively using that energy, not consuming it, it's not going into production, it's not going into survival, this is literally just excess weight on your body, deteriorating your interior health, extra pressure on your organs, extra pressure on your joints, extra pressure on your bones, right? And like I said, when you're feeling fat as fuck and you feel like shit, when you're in debt and your finances are fucked up, this increases the risk of depression compared to people who are of normal weight. Do you understand? Compared to normal weight peers, obese individuals are at an increased risk of diseases of modernity and their associated health complications, as well as a lower quality of life. A systematic review of prospective studies found a reciprocal cause and effect relationship between obesity and depression. All these people that talk about fat shaming, all these people that say healthy at all sizes, happy at all sizes, they're talking shit. They're bullshitting. They're coping. They don't have the discipline, willpower to actually make productive changes. So what are they going to do instead? Cope. Right? So the negative effects in terms of the impact on finances, the negative effects on health, the negative effects on mentality, they're well-documented and they're well-proven. And it's of course, of course, very closely tied to this massive consumeristic society, to the pursuit of instant gratification, to the pursuit of pleasure. Now, negative effects continued. We always usually look at the statistical data in terms of negative effects on the person spending, their finances, um, their mentality and health, and so forth. But we, we rarely look at the flip side of the amount of profit or spending going into these various industries for the marketing tactics to influence all of this, right? So negative effects continued. Statistical data proves that chasing pleasures across different aspects of your life leads to a long leads to long term destruction as shown in the previous um, charts and the previous information. But although from a capitalistic viewpoint, this is an absolute major moneymaker. Human pleasure can never be satisfied or quenched, meaning you will always have customers and not just regular customers, addicted customers. Right. For example, same thing with the age of the internet, with the explosion after the 2000s. Look at Amazon's revenue. Look at the increase in, look at the increase from just 2018 to 2023 projections of digital ad marketing and spending. Look at the increase in, influ in influencer marketing and spending. Look at the increase in retail sales from 1992 all the way to 2021. Look at the increase in personal consumption of individuals from 1950 in the billions of dollars all the way to 2020. And look at the exponential increases after the year 2000. Right? So it's no joke at all. So... It is very easy to see when you're looking at the statistical data about how beneficial this is from an economic and capitalistic perspective and how much profit it brings in, where of course money leads to power, leads to influence, leads to control, and just further escalates this whole 
marketing tactic that we're seeing across this uh, modern society, across this consumeristic society, right? For example, retail sales, you're seeing from um, obviously seasonally adjusted monthly retail and food services sales in the US from 200 billion to about 619 billion over the course of about 20 to 30 years there, right? Personal consumption in the billions of dollars here, 1950s extremely stagnant into the age of the internet, into the more modernized society with more innovations of technology and so forth, an, ex an exponential huge increase in personal consumption. This personal consumption just translates into profits for the corporations, right? There's a reason these companies are spending so much money going from spending on average 500 million to $10 billion just in five years, going from 2018 with 108 billion to projected doubling that in 2023. Right? So it's not just quantifying the negative effects on the human being. It's also understanding on the flip side, why, why is society this way? If this is so destructive to the human beings, why are they doing this? This is the reason why, how much money it makes, how profitable it is, how much power it can bring in, how much control it can bring in. Okay? So summary so far. Humans who are away from survival will naturally, naturally be inclined to follow that pleasure model. Humans will naturally choose decisions based on pleasure. Because of that, and because of how profitable this can be, the modern society promotes instant gratification and markets to the pleasure model. This has statistically proven to decline human life. Mental illness, obesity, depression, consumer debt, consumer spending, corporate retail profits are all increasing exponentially. Creating a lifestyle around pleasure is self-destructive. Okay? Now, how does this transition and translate into trading? A short-term pleasure-chasing mindset in trading will only lead to gambling, addiction, money lost, time wasted, and possibly worse, depending on the severity of the addiction to the markets that can occur. Just like an individual can get instant gratification and become addicted to a various product or social media platform, the same thing is extremely prominent and extremely relevant within the markets. Okay. We have to understand if you guys watch the human inefficiencies and weaknesses webinar, that the market is designed to take advantage of human weaknesses and reward those who can display instant gratification and who reward those who can delay instant gratification and display discipline. The top reason, in my opinion, of why 90% of traders fail is due to that poor psychology and mentality. This statistic of failure rate is only going to increase further with time. The more society becomes engulfed with pleasure, the more losers there will be as they lack any personal discipline. All of their decisions are always made based on pleasure. And that's going to translate. The way you do one thing is the way you do everything. You're never going to be consistent with your body. You're never going to be consistent with your nutrition. You're never going to be consistent with your business ideas or with any ventures or skill sets you want to learn because your mind is just rooted and programmed to look everywhere it can for some type of pleasure in a situation, event, or environment. It's not looking for production. It's not looking for value. It's not looking for growth. We have to reprogram that otherwise, okay? This will be a similar statistic of failure, an increase of failure across any field where one is trying to be better than average, right? Being average, being worse than average is normalized nowadays because when you're average, when you're worse than average, you can relate with everybody else who is constantly consuming. So when you consume, when you chase pleasure, you don't feel bad about it. Hey, everybody's doing this. Well, everybody's also increasingly depressed, facing anxiety in consumer debt. 
household debt, student loan debt, mortgage debt. Is that what you also want to be like too? Nobody's looking at that side of the coin. You know what I mean? So like I talk about in other educational webinars, your emotions in your day-to-day -day life, they're not just going to translate into trading. They're going to translate into trading tenfold. They're going to be amplified when you trade. If you're constantly chasing short-term pleasure, constantly chasing instant gratification in your day-to-day -day life, this is the same mindset you're going to bring to trading where you're going to be looking to overtrade. You're going to be looking just to make money and only focus on the money. You're not going to follow a disciplined trading system. You're going to lack any sense of patience. You can already see, based on other Capital Hungry educational webinars, that that is a recipe for failure. That is an exact, that is an exact chef recipe for failure. Right? So you know that, that statistic that 90% of people lose in the markets, 95%, 97%. Honestly, as time continues to go on, that statistic is just going to grow further. There's going to be more losers, more failures than ever before. Because that is what this modern society is promoting. That is what is profitable. That is what makes a lot of money. And it's not just that. It's not just that it makes money. When you have somebody addicted to pleasure, just like you have a crackhead, just like you have somebody addicted to a drug, you know how easy they are to manipulate? You know how, you know how much easier they will be to conform to societal rules, to government rules and regulations? You know how much easier they'll be to just shut up and listen, not ask questions? So it's not just the cost from a financial standpoint. It's also slowly not even realizing giving up your freedoms, giving up your willpower, giving up your spirit. You're literally giving up your human spirit. You're giving up everything for pleasure. When you look at it that way, it's not worth it. <laughs> when you look at how much money's going into this and how much people are wasting, when you're looking at how this can translate into your trading and just lead to more failure, how it can translate into your business life, your relationships. It's not worth it. When you're looking at how it can lead to obesity, other health issues, mental illness, it's not worth it. But if what I am showing you was shown in mainstream media, then the corporation's profits would die. People would wake up and be like, wait, what am I doing with my life? This isn't normal. This isn't healthy. This isn't productive. This isn't valuable. This isn't fulfilling. What am I doing with my life? But that's not the case. All of these various situations stated are what's normalized, are what's advertised, is what's pushed. So when people do get that little bit of a feeling, because all human beings do, they get that regret when they go, hey, what am I doing with my life? Then they look around and see everybody else is doing the same thing. Oh, well, I guess this is the way it is. That's what the one percenters want. That's what the corporations want. For people to think this is the way it is. This is how life is supposed to be. Consumption. Pleasure. I'm here to tell you it's not supposed to be that way. You're not supposed to be obese. You're not supposed to be mentally depressed and mentally ill. Lacking any willpower. Lacking any personal strength. You're not supposed to be dumbed down. Un, like lacking any type of knowledge or value. It's not how it's supposed to be. Right? <laughs> so translation into trading continued. A study by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission of Forex traders found 70% of traders lose money every quarter. And traders typically lose 100% of their money within 12 months. A study of eToro day traders found nearly 80% of them had lost money over a 12-month period, okay? This isn't based on the trading system. This isn't based on a lack of fundamental understanding or if you're trading with indicators or if you're trading with Fibonacci's or if you're trading with support and resistance. It's not based on any of that. It's based on human psychology. If the market was just as easy as learning lines on a chart, or learning what interest rates do, we would all be rich. 
but the market is designed to be based on human psychology and reward those who can exert and show patience, who can show discipline, who can control their emotions. In a society that's, in a society that's driven by pleasure, that's driven by instant gratification, that's driven by a lack of patience, no shit 80% plus of traders lose, right? It's all based on the psychology. Now, everything I'm saying when you're first taking it in of the statistics of consumption, the statistics of depression, the statistics of what instant gratification is leading to, how society is going downhill, how 80% of traders will lose their money. All of this can seem very negative. All of this can seem very doom, doomy and gloomy, right? Like what the hell, what's the point of everything? No, you have to look at this from an objective view because this gives us data and information to work with, right? So the reprogramming aspect, all of the above statistics, all of the previous criteria, all of the information stated, this gives us data to work with, information to absorb and digest and use. If we can confirm that majority of traders lose, and it's also due to poor psychology, that means no matter how difficult it is, if we have the opposite mentality of the 90% of losers, we can find success, right? If we look at the behavioral patterns of the 90% of losers and see that they're over trading, that they're over leveraging, that they have no trading plan, that they're only trying to make a buck every single day, look at these various trading streams. People spamming in the chats have no clue what's going on in the markets. They're just trying to make a buck right then and there. What do you think that is? A chase of instant gratification, a chase of pleasure, chasing a dopamine hit. That dopamine hit is just disguised as making a little bit of money, but it's really the dopamine hit that they're going after. They're not actually chasing money or wealth development. If the majority of traders were chasing long-term money, were chasing wealth development, then they wouldn't be over trading. They wouldn't be over leveraging. They wouldn't be a thousand people in these trading streams, spamming random shit, trying to catch a signal. Signal chats wouldn't exist and stuff like that right? But there's a major disconnect here. A lot of people think that they're chasing money when they get into trading. No, they're chasing a dopamine hit. They actively entered a trade and by chance, by the market events, they made money there. That money majority of the time is a very small amount for the masses of retail traders who are trading $100 to $1,000 accounts. It's not the actual money that's making them so happy. It's the dopamine hit of making some money, right? So their brain tricks them to be constantly chasing this dopamine hit, instant gratification, every day trying to make a little bit of money. That's what creates gambler's fallacy, where a gambler can be overall net down, macro losing, but every little win they get keeps them gambling. It's not like they're actually making money. It's not like they came out of debt. It's not like they're profitable, but that little win gives them a dopamine hit to keep going. I really want you to rewatch this and understand that psychological concept. That the majority of people, they think they're chasing money. They're chasing a dopamine hit. Because if you were really chasing money and trying to develop your wealth, you wouldn't be doing all those retard things. Right. So now for us to mold our brains and our mentality and reprogram ourselves against the masses to, to train our brain, to focus on patience, to train the discipline, to train our brain, to follow a trading system, right. To delay instant gratification. All of this is extremely difficult. Okay. So where were we? Oh, I just said that. So now this is extremely difficult as it is very easy to fall victim to pleasure and instant gratification as fueled by the brain's need for pleasure as well as greed. Regardless, with consistent programming, this poor behavior can 100% be changed the same way it was initially programmed. It's just a lot of us have, been, have not been in tune with how much programming we have 
gone through in our day-to-day lives. You know what I mean? A lot of us are very unaware about the day-to-day programming that's subconscious, all this marketing, social media, mental stimuli that's trying to push you towards chasing pleasure, right? A lot of us think that this natural pursuit of pleasure is what's best for us because it's normalized in society. They don't realize it's been programmed. It's been manipulated into you to think this way. That same type of programming, that concept of programming, that repetition of bringing new events to our brain that bring us value, it can be accomplished, but it's going to take a consistent amount of time, effort, and energy. Just as much subconscious time you spent checking your phone and checking notifications and and mindlessly scrolling IG or TikTok and being exposed to hundreds of advertisements without even knowing is the same amount of time you're going to have to put into reprogramming yourself from a conscious standpoint, being actively involved in your reprogramming. Okay. So now the solutions to avoid pleasure from a day-to-day life standpoint, and of course, from a trading standpoint. Just some quick points. As we really understand what instant gratification is, we understand the impacts of it on the human psyche. We also understand why it's promoted in the modern society. We understand how we can reprogram our brains if we choose to. Solutions to avoid pleasure. Less social media and screen time. It was pretty clear that when we were looking at that chart of depression increases, but it was divided up by age groups, it was very clear that the older individuals who have less screen time, less time on social media and in the online world have also lower rates of depression, right? Once you have less social media and screen time, you also have to be self-aware to remove events or tasks that are only fueled by pleasure based on what you eat, watch, and do, right? The majority of us, including myself, um, will catch those periods of times where you're just looking at, um, you're looking at an online food delivery app. You're looking at something based on taste. What's really going to taste good? I'm not saying don't enjoy the experiences of life. I'm not saying don't travel, don't meet people, don't experience things like great foods and different types of foods. I'm not saying that, but there has to be this ratio where about 80% of your time is spent on bringing yourself value and maybe 20% is spent on pleasure. You know what I mean? Bring in events that delay instant gratification, such as reading, writing, learning a new skill set, working out and so forth. In your day-to-day life, when you're looking at various things you want to accomplish, focus on long-term goals rather than short-term satisfaction. Create a routine and schedule to roughly follow to structure your time correctly. How you spend every minute, every hour of your day is going to be very important because any minute or hour of your day that you have not allocated to a specific event or task It's going to be allocated for you subconsciously as you're going to pull out your phone and end up being on IG. You know what I mean? So if you don't allocate every single minute of your day and actively go through that process saying from from this hour to this hour, I'm doing analysis. From this hour to this hour, I'm cooking. From this hour to this hour, I'm doing laundry. Here, I'm going to read a book. Here, I'm going to shower take a cold shower. This time, I'm going to do some breathing exercises. This is the period of time I'm doing yoga. If you don't create that structure and schedule for yourself, any gaps within your day where your mind is allowed to wander, it's going to go, it's going to go towards pleasure. That pleasure is going to be subconscious. Maybe you might pick up the video game and end up playing for hours. Maybe you might go on Pornhub. Maybe you're going to find yourself scrolling on TikTok. But regardless, if you don't allocate those hours yourself, they will be allocated for you, whether you like it or not. And it's going to be wasted time. Okay. In trading, 
Do not give in to FOMO, the fear of missing out. That's all related to instant gratification and chasing short-term pleasure. The markets are always here. Regardless if it's a trade war, a pandemic, you're having a global financial crisis. It doesn't matter if a million people are depressed. The market's always here. Follow your trading plan and trading system. This creates discipline. This creates structure. The same way you would, you would create a schedule and routine in your day-to-day -day life is the same way you create a trading plan and system. Because any chance your brain has to go outside of a trading plan, it's going to chase pleasure. It's going to make a retard decision, probably going to lead to a trading loss, an impulsive early entry, an impatient entry, over trading, over leveraging and so forth. But the more structure you have, the more rules you have, the more guidelines you have with what you trade, how you trade, why you're trading and so forth, like I talk about in the trading plan webinar, the more, the higher probability you have of avoiding pleasure, of avoiding losses, okay? Do not compare to others and focus on your own journey. Focus on long-term gains, probabilities, and risk management. Do not trade based on what you hope or feel. Trade on what you see. That's going to seem extremely simple, but it's extremely difficult in the modern age where the majority of people are acting based on what they feel. In their day-to-day -day life, everything's based on their feelings, what they feel like eating based on their taste and their craving, what they feel like watching on TV based on trying to, trying to um, waste some more time and mindlessly numb themselves out from their stressed out job or from what they were doing at school. Everything is based on feeling. If you bring that into trading and you're looking at the markets with your feelings, come on, a recipe for disaster. Okay. So that's it, everybody. I don't want to make these too long. I want to make them very short, sweet, informative. But thank you for attending. Um, obviously, there's only 10 or 12 people in the Zoom right now. But hopefully, you guys enjoy these presentations. Hopefully, you guys like these webinars. I'm going to save and upload this. And you guys can re-watch this as you wish.